Hi guys, my name is Aditya Kelkar. I'm a fifth year medic at the Faculty of Medicine at Radhets Kraluwe and today I'm going to be giving you a talk on thyroid disorders. Before I really get into the uh, thyroid diseases in detail, I want to talk about certain things. For example, by looking at this slide, my question to you guys is how do we distinguish between primary and secondary thyroid disorders and how can this TSH levels help us determine them? So I'm going to help you uh, solve that question. So firstly, what are primary disorders? So primary disorders are some anything which in which there's a problem within the thyroid gland itself. And secondary disorders are something uh, are disorders in which there's a problem either in the hypothalamus or in the pituitary gland. So let's take an example of primary hypothyroidism. So there's a problem in the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is making excess amount of T4, which is getting converted to T3 by 5 prime di or diiodinase now this excess t3 levels is going to exert a negative feedback on the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland which is going to suppress its tsh secretion so as you can see from that example the level of t4 and tsh are in the opposite direction if you would take hypothyroidism it would be the same thing you would have low t4 low t3 compensatory increase in tsh so as you can see the levels are in opposite directions but in secondary disorders, the problem is going to be either in the hypothalamus or in the pituitary gland. Your negative feedback axis is going to get messed up. So your TSH and T4 levels are going to be in the same direction. So let's say if you have secondary hyperthyroidism, so you're going to have uh, increased TSH and increased T4. But this feedback is not going to work properly. So the TSH and T4 levels are going to be in the same direction. Okay, I hope you guys understood that. I will move on to the next slide. Again, before I go into the clinical features of thyroid diseases, I want you to quickly recollect the functions of the thyroid gland, which can be remembered by the mnemonic, which goes by seven Bs. So brain growth and maturation, bone growth, beta one receptors in the heart. So it has a permissive effect on the heart It's going to increase heart rate, contractility, cardiac output, etc. It's going to increase BMR, which is normally the first function we think of when we think of the thyroid gland which is going to be achieved through increased sodium potassium pumps. You're going to have increased oxygen consumption, increased respiratory rate, etc. Increased blood sugars. So it's going to break down glycogen or it's going to synthesize new glucose by the process of gluconeogenesis. It's going to break down lipids by lipolysis and in babies, it's going to stimulate surfactant production. So here are some features of hypothyroid and hypothyroid. So I want you to remember those seven Bs. And I also want you to think Whenever there's hypothyroidism, it means the body is slowing down. And whenever there's hyperthyroidism, that means the body's speeding up. So, for example, in hypothyroidism, everything's going to be slow. You're going to have decreased basal metabolic rate, decreased sodium potassium pumps. You're going to get cold intolerance with weight gain. Your beta 1 receptors are going to have a lesser effect. So, you're going to have a slower heartbeat, decreased cardiac output, etc. Your GRT is going to be slow. So, you're going to have constipation. Your CNS is going to be slow, so you're going to have hyporeflexia. Conversely, in hypothyroidism, everything is going to be fast. So rapid heartbeat, rapid GIT, so diarrhea, rapid CNS, so hyporeflexia. So you can just think about it like that. You don't actually have to memorize these symptoms. All right. Next slide. Uh, I know this kind of it looks kind of confusing, but this is just to classify thyroid diseases into hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism. And I've classified thyroiditis a little separately. Because depending on the stage of the disease, it could present with signs of hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism respectively. Because earlier the gland is like getting destructed, so all the thyroid gland is left out. But as the disease progresses, there's no more reservoir of thyroid gland left in the gland. So you're going to get signs of hypothyroidism. So some of the examples of hyperthyroidism are Graves' disease, toxic multinodular goiter, where the gland is functioning autonomously. You have iodine load. This also goes by the name of Jode Bezidaus phenomenon, in which in certain parts of the region where iodine is deficient and the thyroid gland is working autonomously, where I suddenly replete the stores of iodine, the thyroid gland is going to go crazy and it's going to start secreting a lot of thyroid hormone. Some examples of hypothyroidism is endemic goiter, also due to iodine deficiency, iodine excess by a process known as wolf chaikovs effect. So excess iodine is going to shut off certain enzymes such as thyroid peroxidase, which is uh, required for the synthesis of the thyroid gland. Cretinism, which is also known as congenital hypothyroidism, which I will talk a little more in detail in the coming slides. 
and some examples of uh, thyroiditis such as Hashimoto's, subacute, postpartum varietals, which also I will go over in the next in the coming slides. Thyroid storm. So what is thyroid storm? Thyroid storm is a pretty serious complication of hypothyroidism. It happens when hypothyroidism is not treated sufficiently or there's um, an acute exacerbation due to certain uh, stressful events such as an infection or surgery or something. So you're going to have diarrhea, tachyarrhythmias, you may even have atrial fibrillations and the person may even die. So the way to treat this complication of hypothyroidism is can be uh, remembered by the mnemonic four P's, which is propanolol, which is a beta blocker, which can be used to reduce those beta one effects, which I spoke about. Propyl thyroduracil, which is a anti thyroid drug. Prednisolone, which is a steroid, which could reduce the inflammation, and potassium iodide, which could compete against uh, the thyroid, uh, uh, compete for uptake, and thus via the wolf chaikoff effect, shut down thyroid hormone synthesis. So in the next slide, I'm going to talk about Graves' disease, which is one of the most common causes of hyperthyroidism. It is an autoimmune disease in which there are certain TSH receptor antibodies. So the general symptoms are the symptoms I spoke about about hypothyroidism. So diarrhea, hyperreflexia, heat intolerance with weight loss, etc. The treatment would be with thionamides such as PTU, methamazole, and you could also give beta blockers for symptomatic treatment. The next slide I'm going to speak about exophthalmos and pretibial myxedema, which are two very special clinical features of uh, Graves' disease. And the reason I have a separate slide for them is because their pathogenesis is a little different which makes their treatment also a little different. So normal thionamides, which could be used to treat Graves' disease, can't be used for this condition. And the reason is because these TSH, receptor anti uh, TSH receptors are not only present on the thyroid gland, but they are also present on other cells such as fibroblasts, adipocytes, etc. So these autoantibodies could stimulate these receptors on these cells as well. And this is going to lead to hyaluronic acid secretion, fibroblast proliferation, etc and this is going to cause these two symptoms so to treat this we can use prednisolone we cannot use methamazole because the the, uh, the methamazole drugs are going to act on the thyroid gland here are some examples of hypothyroidism which i already went through i'm going to talk about some specific ones in this slide so cretinism or congenital hypothyroidism so congenital goiter Goiter is basically any sw swelling of the thyroid gland. It could be hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism happens when those TSH receptor stimulating antibodies cross the placenta. This is known as neonatal Graves' disease or hypothyroidism. So it's going to be a genetic defect in the th thyroid hormone production itself. It is also known as dishormonogenic goiter. You're going to have excessive or deficient maternal iodine which crosses into the crosses through the placenta. So the symptoms of cretinism can be remembered by the mnemonic of six P's, which is pot belly, pale, puffy face, a protruding umbilic umbilicus, a hernia, a protruding tongue and poor de brain development. I don't know how much of which you can see in this picture, but yeah, the six P's is going to help you. I think so. Next, we have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is the most common cause of hypothyroidism. So we have some HLA associations such as DR3, DR5, etc. So this is also uh, an autoimmune disease where autoantibodies act on uh, thyroid enzymes such as thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin. So I've given you a small table here to differentiate between the autoantibodies which are present in Graves' disease and in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The clinical features are going to be the same as I discussed before, cold intolerance with weight gain, constipation etc uh, the last slide is going to be on the differential diagnosis of thyroiditis so we can differentiate thyroiditis depending on uh, the tenderness or how painful it is on palpation so we could have painful thyroiditis in the case of subacute thyroiditis which is a transient hyperthyroid phase followed by hypothyroidism which is seen in people after a viral infection then we have painless thyroiditis which is classically seen in Hashimoto's and postpartum, which is one year after delivery, there's a transient hypothyroidism phase or a hypothyroidism phase. You have Graves disease and you have something known as Rydell's thyroiditis, where there is a fibrotic replacement of the thyroid gland. It uh, causes compression of local adjacent structures and it 
very it's very similar to anaplastic carcinoma of the thyroid gland however this thyroiditis would present in a younger population and that's it guys thank you